Hi, I'm Luann Hammond, DrivingTheNation.com, and I am here with Wayne Burgess, Studio Director for Jaguar. And Hi, we are in front of an iPace. Yes, so this is our iPace concept. This is our all new electric SUV. Um, the production version is on sale next year. Um, a really exciting car for Jaguar designer to work on. One of the wonderful things about electric architectures is, of course, you remove the internal combustion engine, the transmission, and you have the freedom to position the cabin pretty much where you want on the car. Right. So we got really excited with the idea of making the iPace a real cab forward, almost monovolume sort of supercar profile. So it actually has more in common with the profile with our CX-75 concept supercar That's than it has with a conventional SUV. Wow. So we really embraced the opportunity that electrification gave us by pushing the cab forward. The car is only sort of 4.6 meters long, so it's about the size of a Porsche Macan, but the cabin length is more than two lengths, uh, two thirds of the length of the car. So you get an interior that's as big as an XJ long wheelbase in a car that's as short as a Porsche Macan. So you really optimize the opportunity for space. So. When I've talked to Ian Callum before, mm -hmm. he's always said it's about the lack of lines, about building a car that flows. Yeah. So how did you build this car so that it flows and yet there's that such a design to it? Well, the great thing about having such influence over the architecture of the car is it meant that we could push the wheels to the four corners. So I-Pace has very short front and rear overhangs has very big wheels, 22 inch wheels on the car, so it has a great stance. It's also very much about the aerodynamics, so the car's very sheer sided to make it as aerodynamically efficient as possible. We put lots of movement and flow into the side view, so it has very voluptuous front fenders, a very powerful voluptuous rear fender, and the movement's much more in the side view than it is in plan shape. And that's better for aerodynamics, but it still gives the car a real Jaguar dynamic feel. When you go into an electric vehicle because you're no longer emitting emissions, do you really have to worry as much about the design? Uh, absolutely. The, the thing with electric vehicles is obviously it's all about getting the best range possible. Mm -hmm. And one of the key enablers for long range is great aerodynamics on the car. So in actual fact, the focus on the aerodynamic efficiency of an electric car is even greater than the car powered by an internal combustion engine. And it's made us think very differently about how we deliver Jaguar design language into that. So there's some really cool features on this car. The, the grill, for example, like, let's look at the, the front radiator grill. The grill is blanked off, but you'll see this top surface rolls into a vent here. Oh, right. And that's actually accelerating the air over the bonnet and onto the windshield. And it's keeping the air attached so that you're reducing the drag over the cabin. And if you look through, you can see daylight through there. Yes. So that's a really nice piece of aerodynamic sculpture that works for the car. And we're using the grill to manage the airflow over the vehicle, keeping it attached. It's the same story on the rear spoiler. Again, the air flows under and stays attached to the rear screen. Now, this is a solar roof. Yeah, so on the concept car, this is a, a little bit of a design flourish. So you'll see the detail on there. The original Jaguar Heritage logo, that diamond shape, of course. is the pattern that we've put on there. Yeah. But that's, that's us having a little bit of a, a stylistic whimsy on our concept vehicle. From a designer, I can't believe it. No, not at all. <laughs> You'll also notice the car doesn't have a rear windscreen wiper. Right. And that's because the air is managed so efficiently over the rear screen, it's attached all the way to the trolling edge of the car. The rear screen effectively cleans itself. Brilliant. And that is actually what we'll have on the production car. We tested it again and again. Our engineering team, when they started doing the CFD runs, so the computer simulations. CFD? Yeah. Computer. Which is, it's computer simulations of the aerodynamic flow patterns. Okay. And they couldn't believe that we didn't need a rear wiper, so they ran it three times. They were like, no, actually, it doesn't need a rear wiper. So that's the aerodynamics actually cleaning the rear screen for you. Brilliant. You'll notice also I-Pace has a very square rear end. Again, yes. that's about managing the airflow. What you want to do, what we've learned, you want to keep the air attached to the car for as long as possible. And that means having a square corner. And these details here, whilst they look cool and it's a nice, it's a nice visual reminder of the rear fender shape of an F type. Sure. It's actually that creases keeping the air attached right to the rear corner of the car. Again, it's reducing drag. The same with the Venturi feature in the lower and the extraction vents in the rear bumper. They're taking air out of the wheelhouse and reducing drag. So I know you are the designer, mm -hmm. but I still have to ask, Jaguar is known for its sound. Mm -hmm. How do you create sound of a Jaguar in an <clears throat> electric vehicle? 
Well, obviously, electric vehicles emit no natural noise. Sure. Um, but what they do do is they give you great performance, so you get maximum torque at zero rev. So electric cars are naturally very, very accelerative. Also, because of where the battery pack is in the car, the center of gravity is very low, so they handle very well, they don't roll very much. And what they do do is they allow you to concentrate on the serene, tranquil interior environment that's also very much part of Jaguar's DNA. Mm -hmm. So this car will be as much about how quiet and calming and peaceful the interior can be with all of that noise suppressed as it is about making a visceral, raughty exhaust note. The other thing that, and we're not alone in this, the other thing that all car manufacturers have got to look at as we move forward into a world of electrification is the noises that we do want to hear in the cars, also from a safety point of view as well. So we're looking at how you can synthesize noises in the vehicle to make it feel like, you know, you've got a premium powertrain in there. Right. Uh, and we, we, we've been having fun working with like Hollywood sound guys about what noises you should hear in the car. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, yeah. because you've got to make some noise to let the people outside yeah. of the car know that you're coming. Yeah, and, and from an interior point of view, I love the idea that if you like the sound of a X-Wing fighter or a Spitfire or whatever, you could maybe have that generate a little bit of noise in the car. Can't wait to see it, Wayne. Thank Th you. I can't wait to get one on the road. Right. Yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My yeah. pleasure.